Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to another camp build. So, Bethesda added the Firewatch Tower to the Atomic Shop this week, which is really, really cool. And Happy Builder World is back again, the public world. So, I thought we'd put the two together and see what we can come up with. Okay, yeah, so really cool new uh, prefab in the Atomic Shop, this one, the Firewatch Tower. Some really, really cool builds with it out there already, but I thought I'd jump in and have a crack and see what I could come up with. We are on the Happy Builder Public World at the moment as well, so that's only really affecting the location, but uh, you can rebuild this anywhere else pretty much if you would like to, but I thought we'd take advantage as soon as we can right now. So this is where we are, you can see, just between Camp McClintock and Wade Airport. This area here is actually just where you do the sort of final part of your testing for joining the army at Camp McClintock fight off a load of robots and stuff and we're just beside that and you see flatwoods over the way there as well so cool spot but you can't normally build here so uh, if you do want to recreate this it's either going to be a public happy builder world custom world or you'll have to move the build somewhere else so here's the tower it looks really cool not quite as tall as the other ones in game but uh, i think it's the right size for a camp really so it's cool one thing that is a bit of a problem with it and the reason i've placed it already is that the foundation on the thing is not that deep that back left corner is um, basically as tall as that foundation gets. So if you're on even remotely sloping ground like this, then you may, will need to keep an eye on that, make sure it doesn't end up floating. So, jumping forward a little bit, I've done a couple of bits that are going to get taken out, so you'll see why in a moment. But we're going to put the staircase in first, and uh, I stress that because there's a bit of a build order thing here, which is... Um, Obviously, if you're on uh, adventure mode, then you'll have to snap to foundations and then use a second foundation attached to the first one to be able to remove them. So you're going to have to put the stairs in first. But also, if you try and move the stairs towards the base of the prefab, you'll find that there are collision issues and you can't get the thing to sit too close to it. Which, uh, you see the sort of issue going on here. But uh, if you place the stairs first and then move the prefab towards the stairs, it seems to bypass that collision issue and you can get them sat nice and snugly together. So, a little build order observation there. Stairs first and move the prefab towards them. That is the opposite way around to the foundations that we're going to be doing in just a second. Because if you try and move the prefab towards foundations, the collision issue starts up again. So you need to put the prefab in and then move the foundation towards that. So the other way around. A little uh, build order pro tip for you. It's a useful thing to know, it'll save you a lot of faffing around. As you can see, we've got that staircase in, just lining up the foundation of the prefab there with it, the base. And we'll move these wooden foundations into place afterwards. I was hoping I'd snap that straight back in, but uh, it was not to be, unfortunately. So we'll have to do this the long, slow, manual way, but that does make it easier for me to show you what I'm doing. So there's always that. So we just want this one foundation here, which we can position pretty much in place, but because this front edge of the base of the prefab, the tower there, is so low to the ground, or as low as it will get there, I can't get the foundation as low as I want, it sits a bit too high. So we'll run a couple off the side here, we'll drop this one down where we've got a little bit more room, and use the snapping to pop that back down. Take those out, and that's more or less in place, it's not quite lined up right, so we'll tweak it a little bit again. Whip that corner one out. I'll nudge this over just a tiny little bit. There we go. Now we can just snap these on again, and it should go right in where I want it. Nice. So I just want that one on the front corner there. On this side, I'm actually going to put three foundations in, and you can see the effect of moving the foundation towards the prefab here, which wouldn't work if I was moving the prefab towards the foundation. So yes, I want three of these here. I'm actually only going to put two in now. The third one I only discovered I needed during the decoration phase. But uh, where I was standing at this end, sort of behind us now, is where I'll need that extra foundation. Because I'm going to put the collector on there during the decoration phase. And it'll clip into the ground, or try to. And then it'll say furniture entry blocked and won't let you place it. So the foundation allows you to sort of pop it up a little bit and have it actually sit on that. It also makes placing the fences in that corner that we'll see in a moment considerably easier, so put that extra foundation in first if you need to. It, depending on where you're building, you may not need it, but in this instance, I did. So we're going to wrap this thing in chain-link fences, as I really like these things. They're nice and rustic and rusty, and <laughs> they look really, really cool. So we're going to then dress them up afterwards. Here, I'm going to put these in manually rather than snapping them into place. You certainly can snap them into place, 
but it's going to take a lot longer because the very first one you put in needs to be exactly right so that it'll follow the line of the base of the prefab when you snap onto the end of it. However, that is a real pain in the neck to get right. And with these being slightly uh, beaten up and not quite straight themselves, you can just manually place them in and they will look good and right without having to spend ages trying to line them up absolutely perfectly so that you can snap them in place. So just disable that uh, snapping at the bottom there and then uh, position them manually. It's much, much easier. We're going all the way around on here and basically repeating this over and over. So we'll speed along a little bit here. I'm sure you guys get the general idea now. But, uh, it does create a nice kind of enclosure for this place and also keeps it somewhat open, despite the reverse junk fences we'll be adding in a moment. So I think that kind of works with this particular structure because of the, the sort of frame at the bottom of it and the fact it's a very outdoorsy type of structure, if that makes any sense. <laughs> but uh, it keeps the right vibe going here and I really like it. So we'll run the rest of these around the outside, which is nice and easy. There we go, get that lined up. I'm just using that sort of slightly thicker edge piece of the foundation there to see what I'm doing. So, as a guide. Tweak that a little bit. Fortunately, with the snapping switched off, these are quite soft on the edges, so you can place them nice and close together, and it's not too much struggle. So, with those in place, let's get the gate in. I'm going to use the haunted house gate here, the rusted chain link one. Using the large one, because it's basically the right size, we're going to have a little opening at the front here that's the size of one foundation. And, as I say, we're going to leave it to uh, just bare earth, but this gate is the right size for that. And as it's going to be the main entrance, it looks good to have it a bit larger as well. And I also haven't used it very much, so plenty of reasons to use this one. It's not quite straight, so I'll we'll tweak it just a little bit. There we go. Fortunately, again, soft on the edges, so it'll connect nicely with the chain link there. And we'll manoeuvre this last piece of chain link in the gap. And as I say, if you've already got the extra foundation sort of behind where we're looking now, behind that chain link, then it's much easier to just put that into place because the foundation will just provide a nice flat surface and everything goes in quite easily. In this case, however, it's considerably more difficult. If you are building straight onto the ground and you've got a slope like this, though, put that post on the left-hand end there at the lower end of the slope because then your fence will clip through the earth a little bit and it won't look like it's floating, which is an adjustment we're making there. So, nice, we are enclosed, let's dress this up a little bit. So we're going to go around the edge, put a few bits and pieces of texture and different uh, fences and wall pieces around, just to make it look a bit more interesting and a bit more solid and permanent. Unfortunately, this particular fence is going to cause a whole bunch of issues again. Um, once you've got that foundation in, as I mentioned before, again, it just doesn't cause half as many problems, so another reason to do that first. But, in this instance, I didn't discover that until the decoration phase, so... It is what it is. But we can manually just position these in, get them sitting nice and close to the chain link, and just adding a bit more texture and a bit more detail. I'm not going to use too many of those encampment fences because they're a bit raidery for this particular build. If you want a more raidery vibe, then they're great for it. But for this one, I don't really want a, a raider vibe, so I'm not going to use too many. I'll just use the odd one here and there to add a bit of variety in. But we're going to go into the reverse junk fences. I won't really keep anybody out if they're reverse, although I suppose you can't push them over with a fence behind them, so there's that. But they do add a little bit of extra depth and texture to the basic outside surface of this camp. I really like these concrete barricades we've got here. They come from the hunt from the Treasure Hunter event, so if you want to pick those up, that's the place to do it. Really, really cool. Do jump up a bit. They sometimes look a little out of place, but... Uh, in this case, they look quite cool for just dressing stuff up with, and I like them quite a lot. So I've been using them a bit lately. There we go, nice and in place. And we'll progress on round. I'm going to carefully place these junk fences up against the edge here so I don't bulldoze those trees, because although I could replace them, and there's plenty of budget to do that with, I'd rather keep them there and keep the place being a bit more organic, and they add a bit of extra natural set dressing to the camp, so... We'll try and avoid that. Doesn't matter too much that the rock's going to go. Apparently the tree's growing straight through it anyway. <laughs> so again, we'll just carefully position these up. I'm going to swap them around, mix and match a little bit, just to change the textures. I'm going to stick with these simpler junk fences. I'm not in the atomic shop at the moment, but keep an eye out. Hopefully they'll return sooner or later, if you haven't already got them. But these simpler design ones sit a little bit closer to the walls a bit more easily, whereas the other ones have more texture, which is nice, but they won't go up against other objects so easily. 
So we're going to continue that theme all the way around the outside and dress the whole thing up, but as you've got the general idea now, let's move on to the last section inside before we do the tour. Get the place decorated up, which is to separate off this set of foundations here. So I'm going to put my generator here and a couple of other bits and pieces as well, but I want it to be kind of... I don't exactly want to call it a room, but I kind of want it to be a separate room. <laughs> You'll see, with using the chain link fences, obviously, it feels like it's separate, but uh, not separately enclosed, almost. It's kind of hard to describe that, but uh, you'll see in the, the finished product in a moment. Again, got the toggle off for the snapping and just manually placing it in. Nice and easy, just using the edge of the foundations as a guide there. You can tweak these to your heart's content to get them lined up just how you want them. The edge of the base of the prefab there makes it jump around a tiny little bit, but a little bit of patience and you get these in just right. Got the gate just offset a little bit because the post on the prefab there that supports the tower is uh, kind of in the way of the gate if it was on the corner. But it looks good there, just a little offset. Tweaks in place and that should about do the job. So as I'm about to be attacked by feral ghouls and we're basically done, this is probably a good time for me to disappear and take a little look at decorating this place. So I will catch you in the tour. And there we go, fully decorated. And this, as I say, uses about half of the budget or so, so quite a small build, really. But it's come together really nicely, added a lot more texture and a lot more fortification to the base of that tower. Got to keep those wasteland denizens out. I do like the look of this. I'm not 100% sold on the cage bulb lights at the top, but uh, I wanted to sort of add a little bit of extra light and texture to it and style. So plenty of bits and pieces added around the outside here. Dressed it up a bit. I actually changed it a tiny little bit from what I did in the first build. Not that you really see that anyway, but... I had a little accident just before I finished the decoration phase. I managed to scrap the whole damn tower, which meant three quarters of the build disappeared instantly, and then I also had to dis disassemble the rest of it so that I could put the tower back in, which was really frustrating as it was basically done at that point. But uh, fortunately, it doesn't take too long to build this, which is cool. So, plenty of bits of texture around the outside there, just dressing it up. Got a couple extra bits of pieces around, like the uh, shelter entrance. You see the collector just tucked in the sort of cut-out corner there. As I say, the foundation's underneath him to stop him from popping through the ground and prevent it from actually placing. But it made those fences easier to get in. A little bit of extra decoration. Stuck the railing on there, partly to just tidy it up in its scrappy kind of way, but also to keep the collector from wandering off anywhere, because they're kind of annoying and they make a lot of noise when they do that. He still functions if he can't go anywhere, so that's great. Loads and loads of little bits of decoration and stuff just to dress up this entrance. A few fashion act bits and pieces, which is just around the corner. A few other bits and pieces as well, just to make it a bit more inviting. We'll head on inside. If I can find the gate, we'll close it behind us. Come on, there we go. There did those hubcap flowers that I picked up uh, earlier in the week as well. Just add a little bit more decoration. Crammed a little vendor in just inside the gate there for anybody who stops by. Not there'll be a, a thing with it being on uh, the Happy Builder world, but it looks good nonetheless. And we've got this lower level being used as a crafting space. So I've managed to fit everything in here, which is really cool, and uh, had room for a bit of decoration as well, which is nice. The only thing you might struggle to do if you're not doing this on Happy Builder world is putting some of the wall decorations on, like the uh, display there and the chalkboard at the back because that does really rely on the ability to place things without having them snap. So you might have to work around that if you're doing this in adventure mode or something similar in adventure mode, as well as building somewhere else. But I do like how this come out. It's nice to use one of the uh, worlds once in a while. There we go, a little space there for my power armor station. And there's my generator. I did want think about using a smaller generator, but I needed the power for the decon arch. So that went fine. Surprisingly, that Symptomatic went in that corner really easily. I was expecting to have problems with the collision on the back side of it, as it's often a bit problematic back there, but it just went straight in, no problems at all, which was really, really pleasant surprise. It might be because it's a happy builder world, or it might be because it's chaining fences behind it rather than walls, I don't know, but hey, I'll take it. A little bit of crops in the corner there, more for decoration than for actual use at the moment, but it does look cool. Pass on through the decon arch and head on upstairs. Plenty of light coming from these cage bulb lights as well. I really like those things. They look great and uh, suitably wasteland and a bit scrappy and they provide a really nice light as well. So use those quite a lot. 
I'm gonna have a look around this place in the evening in a moment because uh, the lighting is fairly simple, but it works. I like it. I head up into the tower, which is a living space, or sort of bedroom, I suppose. Pro tip, watch your build order when you're decorating this spot. The flags on the wall, and obviously the rug on the floor as well, really have to be the very first thing you put in. They're a nightmare to do even then. Placing stuff on the walls in here is just not what this is designed for, so it's a bit awkward. But uh, if you've got furniture to work around as well, then it's um, maddening. So anything you want to put on the wall, do first. Uh, yeah, I like got a few plushies, little bits and pieces, nice little space to hang out, somewhere to sleep, keep the weather off. I do wish we had a version of this where the windows weren't all broken though, because that'd be just a little bit nicer as a player home. But it's got that nice rustic vibe. Got a few benches, a few little bit, some plants up here. I didn't want to put too much up here, otherwise you'd end up not being able to move around very easily. But it does provide a nice view and somewhere you can uh, fire down from. Those uh, firefly lanterns up on the corners as well. Just dress it up a little bit. Sort of pan around. Got the slight clipping through of the plant there, but what can you do? So that'll place it out right in the middle of the top of the staircase. So we'll make do. Pan around. This is a really good spot for the view as well. I absolutely love the view up here. So it's kind of a pity you can't build here in adventure mode, but it is what it is. There's a quest location right behind it, so it's not surprising you can't really. Your little plushies on the bed kind of makes it difficult to get into and sleep but uh, it does look good and a lot more dressed up as well a bit of decoration in the corner that little space above the top of the stairs is a bit problematic you can't really do anything with it you can't put workbenches there or anything like that because it's just not enough room but uh, squeezing a little bit of decoration in there is quite nice as well we'll pan our way down again put a few flowers on this level because again you need just enough room to get through so i don't want to put anything else on there but did need a little decoration as well. I was thinking about with it being a happy builder world, just sort of floating an extra story into this building and having it come off that middle layer, but with the railing on the uh, walkway there, it means you wouldn't be able to transition onto the floor I'd added anyway, so I decided against it in the end, plus you wouldn't be able to do it in uh, adventure mode either, so what can we do, you know? But all in all, I'm really happy with how this has come out. I really like kind of tiny little compact camps like this. It's got plenty of detail and has everything you need in it, but uh, it doesn't take up too much extra space. Let's have a look around this in the evening. Yeah, it's a nice little glow coming from all of those lights. It's uh, kind of welcoming, homely, warming, and I really like it. Nice little uh, break from the wasteland here. Nice and secure and safe, or reasonably so, especially if you're kipping up in the tower. Does the job quite nicely. Keeps that scrappy vibe. Definitely looks like it's built out of stuff that's been reclaimed from abandoned structures in the wasteland. I'm going to leave the gate open for this time. <laughs> it was quite the struggle last time. Yeah. A few lanterns around. Just add little splashes of colour and light here and there where they needed. And also just for extra decoration as well. They do well on that. Quite happy that I managed to fit everything in as well. I put a rug down on the floor, which um, is the 76 rug. I did originally put the uh, sort of rubber mat down, but I wanted something a bit more interesting in the end, just to break up the blank concrete base of the tower there. Looks a bit more interesting that way as well. Same with the uh, doormats, which aren't really necessary for a place like this, but, uh, you know, it's nice. Adds a little bit of uh, home comforts, I suppose. Head on up into the tower. Have a little look at the lighting I've done in here. Fairly simple, it's basically just a couple of lanterns and one light up in the roof there. I've used the festive log light up on the roof there, so it's uh, something I don't use very often. It's kind of out of the way, it hangs quite low so it can kind of get in the way in a lower roofed place, but in here there's plenty of clearance, so that's cool. And it provides that nice kind of warming glow, and is a variation on the cage lights as well, which I use a lot. Figured putting uh, some weapon displays in on the few little blank bits of wall would be quite nice as well, because, you know, if you get attacked in the night, might want to jump out of bed, grab a chain, use the assault rifle, stand on the balcony up here and uh, fire down on anybody who's trying to break into your home. So, nice spot, this. I really like the view over to the River Gorge Bridge there as well. It's uh, a really good spot for that. Such a pity you can't build here normally outside of the Happy Builder world. But... Gives me an excuse to build in this particular uh, public world that Bethesda have put together. Which is always nice. 
do like the little glow off these firefly lanterns. I wish I put out a bit more light, actually, because they'd be a bit more useful then, but they make nice little accent pieces. So we'll pan our way back inside. Gotta close the door behind us. Need to pick up some more stuff to put in display cases, really. My selection's a bit limited at the moment. I have to keep my eyes open when I'm running around on stream or something. Yeah, I like this place. It's kind of cosy, despite all the broken windows. So, it's cool. And I really like the structure as well. It's very fitting for the West Virginian wasteland, in that we've got similar sorts of structures around. It really looks like it belongs. And then you can dress it up really nicely as well, which is cool. So, I do hope you folks enjoyed that one. If you did, please do consider dropping subs and likes for me. I do very, very much appreciate it. Down below the video, you can find channel memberships, the merch store, and my social media links as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, I very much appreciate the support there. It really helps out. Massive thank you to everyone who's done that as well. And as I say, do join the live streams as well. We're, of course, playing 76 and Control at the moment. We've got some more stuff on the horizon as well. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.